playmats over here so that you can download those files so that you can download the playmats yourself if we, you would like to. And if you're like, what's a playmat? <laughs> I've got like five of them over here. <sighs> oh, nice. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, well, Bo, you're a yeah, huge just... uh, Magic the Gathering fan. Uh, I am. How, how did you get started in Magic the Gathering? <laughs> um, young, um, as a kid, just, you know, like that and Pokemon card game, you know, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! And now just sharing it with a kid, my own kids, you know, it's, uh, it's been definitely a voyage that, um, like I, I loved it first and I thought it was like fun, you know, just to play card games, but then, um, you know, having, having kids is like, it's really awesome to share with. But yeah, I guess like, uh, you know, just as a kid went to the card store, you know, <laughs> played, played in a couple tournaments and, uh, just definitely have kind of stuck with, especially magic, the gathering. I stick with that. I play that pretty often actually. Is there like a certain card that you play all the time or is there like a good card? It's more like certain deck, right? Like, or certain style decks. Cause the, you know, you have, um, rotating sets, um, with magic where basically you have like new sets that are released and then, um, older sets will be kind of rotated out of being legal, um, for, for like competitive play. Mm -hmm. So you constantly have to kind of like build new decks and build new, you know, different builds for your, your archetype or whatever. Um, I, I would say that I lean more towards red. Uh, so red deck wins is like a thing in magic where, um, basically it's like the, you know, the, the faster, uh, you know, more, more hasty type of play. It's just, it's, it's fun <laughs> jump right in and start attacking. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> it's a classic game. I, I never got into it, but uh, if I'm going to expose my nerdiness, I used to play Hero Clicks at the comic store. I think that might be even worse. That's like Warhammer 40k for kids, right? <laughs> uh, I sold a lot of Hero Clicks at my comic shop. I, was... I love Hero Clicks. Never played it, but I definitely sold a lot. I don't even know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> Ralph's too cool for this conversation. Yeah. That's not actually true. That's not true at all. I just don't know what you're talking about. Well, the problem with Tira Clicks too, when I had the comic shop, it's like, you know, we kept expanding, making the shop bigger, but there was a period of time where the shop was kind of small and we set up a table for the Hero Clicks players and then nobody could get around them to like actually use the oh. store. We we bring in huge tackle boxes full of hero clicks, right? Like these guys have like suitcases bring in. We we require a lot of space. Yeah. And nothing. To uh, sorry for the I, like I had to upload some stuff to that. So I was hoping that you all would just take over and be the most bantery, wonderful group of people, and then you're like. <laughs> I bantered. I talked. Come on. Yeah. I, I, this is a topic I, I came never in here. For my obligatory two minute, two little punch lines adjacent, knock, knock. And then I'm like, you got to <laughs> handle the rest, right? <laughs> yeah, right, everybody. You have some MTG players in the in the chat right now. Um, yep. Yeah, that's awesome. You should hit me up, uh, DM will play match. <laughs> nice. I think you just made some new best friends. <laughs> <laughs> so much room for activities here in the Discord server. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so much room. You see me leave in the middle of the chat, like that's where you know where yeah. I'm at. Where I'm yeah. at oh, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this game looks fun, but I've got other games to play. Yeah, everyone comes here to learn about competitive backdoors and breaches and leaves to go play Magic the Gathering. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Ooh, <Whoa>. sick burn. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so, Facilitate. yeah um well i have never played so i'm gonna join you guys <laughs> you can teach me how all right this game that i made and worked for webcast, really you guys. Webcast. <laughs> this was a great webcast really introduced me to not this game but every <laughs> other game that we want to talk about yeah <laughs> <laughs> the gateway drug. That's what we're gonna call <laughs> back to us at Bridges. I don't. I don't think... <laughs> so, um, Jason, you, you mentioned mats. So, are you? 
Didn't I think you mentioned that you're actually like providing the files so they can take them to make like the the mouse patty kind of ones, right? Yeah, uh, we just added it to the BNB Playmats channel on Discord. So if you are there, uh, you can go to the BNB Playmats. We're also going to put it onto the website. Did, Deb, did we do that? Did we put it on the website? Yes, today. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, if, you wanna, if you just want to snag it from the channel, and all the things you need are right there to. Just build an entire website while we're talking. Got it. While, I'm, it. while so, I'm playing Magic the Gathering too. I, I can be a little busy. So Jason, is there a is there like a site where you can go have those like mouse pads like custom made or something? Yeah. So in the uh, BNB Playmats channel, there is the um, actually I'm going to share this screen and hope that the screen sharing works again in the future. So I'm going to share Discord. Share this window. And for those listening, if you've never seen like um, an actual like game mat before, like they're made of, out of basically the same like kind of mouse paddy kind of material, right? Um, but they're really nice. So like usually like kind of like a silky kind of smooth, you know, mm-hmm. top layer for cards to go kind of slide across. It's um, definitely definitely worth playing on, um, especially if it's got like the um, the card the card slots on there. Yeah, there's. Oh, I hate when you're playing on a surface where like the, it's too hard and then like you can't get your finger under the card. It like gets like stuck to the table. The play mats yeah. completely eliminate that yeah. problem. Yeah, you're reminding me of that. Sweet. <laughs> That's dope. Yeah, is this the part of the show where we show all of our play mats? Because I don't have one, so the, I'm out. <laughs> no one is show your, It's kind of like a challenge thing. thing. <laughs> it's kind of like a challenge point thing. You don't have yours, then um, you get a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, I get it. So we that made one. two. Uh, one's the big one, like tournament style, or and then this one, the hope is that people just grab it, uh, print one out, and like throw it in their bag, and then when they're at a con or something, they can just pull this out at uh, lobby con or bar con, play with some people. Uh, so we're making the file available for free because we didn't want to print them and then ship them, like just. Go take the file and print it at inkgaming.com, which is uh, over here. So you get down there, it's inkgaming.com. I think this one was like 40 bucks to print, and this one was 40 bucks to print. If you are at a conference and you want to do a Backdoors and Breaches tournament, then we'll print them for you and send them to you. Mm. I'm like, what's that now? Yes. <laughs> yes, we will. Yes. Yes, we will. That's a uh, thanks, but I forgot I had these. <laughs> All right, Just so. Creating some banter. Yeah. Thank you, Bo. <laughs> oh. Look at Bo pulling his weight. <laughs> so, um, what about? Printing some of those out to give out. Is that something you plan on doing at conferences too? Like, uh, yeah, not, so not the mouse pad style, but like, that, you remember I mentioned to you, like, a lot of the, the decks now come with like the, the fold out paper ones? Yeah, um, not sure about the fold out paper ones, but what, we're, what I'm going to do is if you come to an in person con where we're actually playing competitive actors and breaches, we'll bring a bunch with us. And then if you play and you're the winner, then we'll give you your own play mats to take with you. Nice. Uh, not Ed, though. If Ed wins, then I'm just going to be upset. As if I ever win, Jason. I know. I mean, oh, geez. I'm, I'm rooting for you at least one time. I told you. Yeah. Usually. Well, Jason. just to let you know, he stacks the deck. So it's. So how he wins? It's statistically almost impossible. He wins 95% of the time. <laughs> yep. Hey, well, if anyone knows any Lua, let me know and we'll, uh, we'll hack the mods so I have a significant <laughs> advantage. <laughs> All right, so today we're in the webcast live chat. Uh, you can talk about backdoors and breaches all you want to. Uh, feel free to look there. And, and for the people who are like, hey, backdoors and breaches is always sold out. True. Uh, we order a lot, and then people all over the world buy them. And we're like, yay, thanks. Uh, then they do sell out. Uh, so right now we have a whole lot of them coming to the Spearfish General Store at the end of the month. So get them at the end of the month if you want them. But we have, if you go to the Backdoors and Breaches channel and click on the Start Here or Virtual Solutions, like there are free ways to play Backdoors and Breaches. You do not need to buy a physical deck. 
In fact, some of these are better at playing online than virtually with your teams. Like Deb and I, we do a lot of demos for people. And this is the version that we generally use. Like this version right here is just great for uh, playing on Zoom, playing virtually with your teams. So uh, you don't need to have a physical deck to play. In the future, e like to play competitive actors and breaches, each person needs to have a deck. And so if you're doing in-person cons, then definitely have your own physical decks, but they'll be available at the end of September. What other? What else is going on? Uh, hey, Grayson, how's it going? Uh, extreme paper clip says where does one find magic the gathering arena yeah so you um <clears throat> below <Beluve> for beloved <laughs> answered that one uh it, so it's on wizards website um wizards of the coast and um they have it uh, available for mobile now too which is pretty awesome um it's a little difficult you know but they, they did a pretty decent job like making it so you can kind of hover over the cards and like you know, that's 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 like a really hard thing to do is like a card game on mobile. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they managed to make it pretty, pretty decent. Um, so and it's free to play, right? It is. Yeah. yeah. So free to play. Um, you know, the biggest hurdle is like having good decks, right? Which they, they sure. give you some starter decks um, like to actually compete, like in the actual um, like the ranking system, uh, you definitely end up paying money to like get new cards and stuff you know to build better decks right yeah that's always like the hard part about getting into magic is that it's not like you sit down with an opponent and you have the same deck and it's like equal definitely well, so if you're able to optimize your decks you can have a real advantage yeah so one of my favorite things that magic did is they released um these game night boxes so nice. magic game night and so there's five decks that are all equal uh equal strength um decks i like that a lot in each of one so like for me like i you know i can build out like a really good deck if i wanted to um but i'm just gonna like destroy my kids and that's not fun <laughs> sure, <laughs> all, yeah. we even we even the table um with with uh you know equal decks like this and it's really fun because then like they're all weighted the same um and like, they, they beat me like often. <laughs> That's really cool. I'm going to get that. I, you know, that was one of the things that always held me back was just like, I don't want to put in like the time and the energy into like researching these perfect decks and combos and like uh, completely optimized. But yeah, that's really cool. I didn't know they had that. I'm going to pick that up and start to get into magic more. That's cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun game for sure. <laughs> I've always liked playing it, like when, because my brother is really into Magic, and he'll come over and he brings the decks that are already pre-built. So that's always fun. But to think about doing that myself, it's just like uh, I don't know if I want to invest that much into it. But I do like playing Magic. It's a cool game. So that's cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. You well, that. so the other thing too is like there's different formats, right? So you have to like figure out what format you want to build for. So like there's mm -hmm. standard, which is like the current, um, the current sets that are legal, like as of right now, right? But then there's like historic. So if you wanted to use like old cards, you know, ones that are from previous sets, um, you can make like a historic deck. And um, then you get into all like the rules of like, is your deck legal for which format and kind of stuff. And then my favorite one is actually draft. Um, so that's where you just take six packs and you open the six packs of cards and then you make a deck out of the six packs you have. Oh, wow. And then you just play it on the fly. So that's it's fun stuff. We um we actually did it at Wild West Hacking Fest a couple of years ago. Um, I brought a box um of of magic cards, uh, a, like a box of packs, and we did like a draft thing at Wild West Hacking Fest with a bunch of people. Very cool. Very cool. R Ralph just left. He didn't have anything to add. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, you guys got this. <laughs> We're still talking about magic. I know, I'm sorry. I, I, I totally derailed that. My bad. <laughs> well, I no, think that's I think one of the I things. Did. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you look at what we made, Backdoors and Breaches, it took our backgrounds and all the things that aren't InfoSec related and said, here's our passions, here's our ho hobbies, here's our other skills that we have. And let's, how can we adapt it to what we do on a daily basis? So being able to play Backdoors and Breaches is kind of like taking what we knew from other industries and just bringing it with us. That was me teaching something right now. That was that was it. That, that was, was really good. That was it. I, I learned it something, Jason. Thanks. And it was prior to the webcast. So the webcast will begin in 15 minutes if you're here early. 
you're you're not missing anything. This isn't it. Like the one person I saw come and leave, like, no, nah, you should have stuck around 15 <laughs> minutes ago. And you're like, wait, you can see us come and leave? Yeah, I can see the number go up and I can see the number go down. Uh, we see exactly <laughs> the person's name and everything. Just as soon as they add, as soon as they go away. It just, yeah. It's, we'll reach out. We'll reach out after and yeah, we'll send we'll send a follow up email. Yeah. Make sure everything's okay. <laughs> you, you okay? Did you get called into a meeting? Because that's the yeah. Was it, was it important? How important? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, leave me alone. Think, if you think this is terrible and you don't want to stick around for this, wait for the 24 hour pre show banter conathon, oh, which is yeah. happening on October 15th, where it's going to be 24 straight hours of this, except for the one hour where Bo plays music. <laughs> the, the one hour where it's good everything else i don't know it depends yeah. it's like all day long we're, all right everybody in nine hours we got bo coming up <laughs> that's Just, when the show starts don't worry this isn't the show <laughs> this oh, is the yeah. pre show remember we told you before you got started this the pre-show banter before actually the one hour show jason are we gonna <laughs> people know the schedule or are we everything's a surprise everything is a surprise the, the schedule should be a CTF. There we go. Another idea. Perfect. Uh, if you make it to the end of the 47 challenges, you will get the schedule. And you can learn out what the schedule is. Yeah, that's all you get. That's all you I get. That idea. And the whole thing's encoded. So you have to wait to the last hour to get the decryption key. <laughs> yeah. Worst the CTF I ever went through. <laughs> Uh, so uh, whenever, awesome. <laughs> whenever we create puzzles and things for the zine uh like as soon as we create like oh oh that oh yeah that's that's really terrible as far as like that's going to be really hard to solve and then we go like now let's take it one layer deeper so we enc encode that and make it backwards and then and then okay and then that leads you to like an online ex like so you do this whole thing and you're like son of a <laughs> this is just the start. Yeah, it's yeah. just to anger our community, I guess, and frustrate them. It's okay. but it's for you. It's it's for the community. It's for the community. It's so, and uh, we so, got to get uh, that guy to the person who makes the escape rooms for us to put that link at the end to say, please apply for jobs at Black. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've I've been thinking of a segment. So the other day I caught a little alligator, and so I could do alligator wrestling. <laughs> That, that would what? be it. Hi. Did you wrestle yeah. it or you caught it? How did you? Well, I mean, I, I caught it. I mean, I, mean, I live in Florida. That's all we do. We just kind of run around <laughs> catching alligators. So, yep. yeah. I mean, so what else would I do? Is it, is it animal abuse to, to wrestle an alligator? Uh, I don't know. It depends if you win. Yeah. Right? Like... Um, only where the signs <laughs> that say don't molest the alligators. Like, that's. Yeah. <laughs> Do you actually have those signs in Florida? Do not molest alligators. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, they have. That's because some somebody must have done it. Yeah. Yikes. Oh. <laughs> Florida man today molest eight alligators. <laughs> <laughs> this is the... all the other alligators that have been molested in the past, like come forward. <laughs> Me too. Uh, Florida man some... loses arm while molesting alligator. That sounds about right. You know, we're gonna need a trigger warning here in a second. Uh, speaking of which, uh, this is not the webcast. The webcast will begin in 11 minutes. If this is your first time on a Black Hills Information Security webcast, what a day! What a day for you to show for the first time. Because uh, today there's almost no educational value whatsoever. We're just teaching people how to play competitive backdoors and breaches, which is a game that we created to do incident response tabletops, where we at some point said, wait a second. Hacking other people is more fun. And so we decided to make it a competitive version. And then John, about a year and a half ago, said, okay, here's the competitive version. And then we did a webcast on this like a year and a half ago. Uh, if you go back and watch it, it is almost incomprehensible. Uh, the words that are said and they, the, the stuff that we came up with. Because uh, I don't think we play tested it more than for eight minutes before John's like, here you go, let's do a webcast. <laughs> Good times. Uh, so There's we went back better. and <laughs> that's standard yeah. HIS protocol right there. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. 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 Uh, so Ed and I, we we looked at it in Deb's with us, and we like just really like you know played the game a lot, and we're like, wait a second, this would be better, and wait a second, this would be better, and wait a second, this would be better, and then we played it in Reno, not not like for gambling. Thousands um, of people. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and then they played it and they were like, well, this should be improved and this should be improved and this should be improved. And we're like, you're, you're totally right. You're hundred percent correct. Uh, and so we took those improvements and then we decided to do this webcast. So the Reno tournament was so much fun and it was yeah. surreal to have John in there, like narrating the action. That was just mm -hmm. an epic finale for sure. Yes. It was. It was a good time. And then we had the finale where Slugna played against Joshua Wright. And yep. uh, that was a great game. Like just watching it. And there's like maybe 15 of us watching it, but the 15 of us had a great time just watching them play. And so if we, 15 people watched those two play and had a great time, then imagine what would happen if we invited a thousand of you to watch me and Ed play. Hmm? Huh? huh? Oh, here we are. What an intro. You've been working on that, haven't you? <laughs> no pressure. Oh, was no, that the funny part? Uh, well, we got 10 more minutes. You could do it again in another 10 minutes. Don't worry, this is not webcast. <laughs> no, <laughs> the webcast up some new Blanchies. Oh, did I have new Blanchies? <laughs> yeah, you got some new Blanchies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you ring the bell, please? please? <laughs> I only ring the bell when someone gets a job. <laughs> <laughs> Which we've gotten to do 135 times. Ooh. <laughs> Not a flex. Is that a flex? I don't know. It seemed like a flex. Are you flexing? Oh, Slegna is going to be in Josh's class in a couple of weeks. I definitely hope you talk about it. Also, oh, can you look at the construction going on in the background? Because they weren't going to be here today, but now they are here today. And then they're... Mm -mm. That's good. Mm. Adding an indoor hot tub, huh? Interesting <laughs> choice. <laughs> So Ralph's they're better the when they're indoors. <laughs> Ralph's got jokes. <laughs> Sorry, I just, just going with. He's brought it up multiple times, so I'm just making a guess at it. Maybe right? Ralph should teach us comedy. <laughs> Why have I brought up an indoor hot tub? <laughs> uh, if you don't know what we're doing right now, this is called pre-show banter. Uh, we show up because you show up, you show up because we show up. It's a vicious like, cycle, and uh, we like it so much that we're doing it for 24 hours on October 15th. At some point, we should drop the link in here in case anybody wants to sign up. So far, 100 <laughs> people have. Uh, the thing about the, I think the 24-hour pre-show banter conathon is that you do not have to be there the whole 24 hours. That's only John and I. So John Strand and I will be there the whole 24 hours. You should give out an award for someone who does like successfully make it 24 hours, right? I have a hard well, time. We, I don't know how we could prove it, but. So we were thinking about uh, doing a code like a code word, just like having 24 code words and just give them out sporadically throughout the 20, uh, mm. the pre -show the time. Yeah, so you had so, them watch it, it mm, and the whole time. And, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You can mm -hmm. be one of the chosen few who made it through all the bad jokes and interesting music from Bo. So <laughs> yeah. we go to unsign up. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you can you can check out anytime you want, but you can never leave. <laughs> exactly. On a cult. Um, uh, hotel pre-show banter. That's right. <laughs> we're you know, go when, to we tell, when we tell the new people who join us that we're not a cult on the business meeting, I don't know how they take that. <laughs> well, you do say better together. So I mean it does I mean it does it sound cultish? No, but I mean <laughs> not. It's a French. Friendship. It's a family. Where yeah. do we unsign up? Nice. Yeah. Where do we, we get, let me off this train, please. Please stop <laughs> <off> the ride. <laughs> Seen this uh, show, man. I'm not drinking Kool-Aid, dude. <laughs> Six minutes. Six minutes. As a reminder, uh, note, I would argue that today's webcast is 100% educational. Learning to play backdoors and breaches will teach you. Yay. You would okay, extreme paper clip. I understand what you're saying. The real way of playing backdoors and breaches right. is hundred percent educational and this is wonderful. competitive. Yeah. But this is competitive. Uh, so today I'm just hacking Ed, Ed's hacking me. You're all watching. Um, and then we're gonna give you the assets and tools to be able to go do this yourself if you want to play. So uh, but backdoors and breaches, uh, we've sold thousands and thousands and given away even more than that uh, of the game. And Deb and I get the give demos of it. We get to see it actually used in organizations. People have hired us to do tabletop exercises. 
I did one scenario that lasted for two and a half hours because they got so into like their procedures and what they would actually do. It was very, very good. Uh, and so back doors and breaches, the game for incident response tabletop exercises is very educational. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we're going to start doing a lot more live streams of those as soon as Ryan Ooh. figures that out. Right, Ryan? This one's streaming live right now. What? What? Oh. Is, oh, dude, I'm live. I was going to wear a different hat. Me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hot tub not included with factors and breaches. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a fact. That's a fact. Jason yes. can yeah. only afford one. <laughs> no, he's not giving one out for everyone, all right? <laughs> I'm taking all my backdoors and breaches money and just buying a hot tub. <laughs> Competitive backdoors and breaches where the are kill teams are money? made up and the procedures don't matter. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Also, we lose a lot of money on backdoors and breaches. We could have so many hot tubs if we charge more. Uh, yeah. We do it for you because it's better together. Well, because we do mail them. Like, let's say someone from Singapore reaches out and says, hey, would you uh, sell me one of these? Like, sure. And then we charge like three dollars or four dollars for shipping, uh, and then it costs us forty-eight dollars to ship yeah. that one pack of backdoors and breaches to Singapore. Yeah, it's not smart. Yeah, we proudly suck at capitalism. We proudly, proudly suck at capitalism. Bad. It, like our thought is, if a human being in Singapore wants to play backdoors and breaches, why am I going to deny them from being able to do that? We're going to get so many requests. From Singapore now. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna uh, light you up here. As a yeah, reminder, you, you can twenty thousand decks. <laughs> yeah. As a reminder, there is free virtual versions to play right here on Discord. <laughs> Lots of virtual. Versions. You don't have to mail anything to you. You can be in Singapore or Russia or wherever. <laughs> wherever you call home. Wherever you call home. Speaking of which, if you're on Discord today, uh, go ahead and post a GIF. That represents where you live. Let's see if Deb can get to hers first. But Deb and I live she's down the street from each other. Uh, ah, she got oh, first. Uh, she got we both live, first. We both live pretty much the same place. So. <laughs> All right, so go yep. ahead and post a, a gift from where you're at, and we're going to get ready to start here in just two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Will this be recorded? It absolutely will be recorded, and the recording will be available as soon as this is over because Ryan put it onto YouTube, and that is what we're going to do starting on October 4th. <laughs> All webcasts after October 4th will be live streamed on YouTube as well. The only thing is that you will not get a certificate that you can use for CPEs. If you watch it on YouTube, you have to do that through GoToWebinar because that's the only way that they can you know, know that you were actually here, uh, and then that way you get your CPEs. So this will be recorded then, right? Son of a... Yeah, That's no. gonna happen. Two more times. Forgot Hold to on. do that part. Will you be posting the slides? Will you be posting uh, there, the slides? Where are the slides there, at? There are no slides today. There is no slide. Oh, well, how am I supposed to learn anything? I thought you said this was the most educational programming that you had today. Ah, son. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, everybody. Hey, we got one more minute. And then we're going to get started for reels. Uh, thank you for joining us today on this Black Hills Information Security webcast. Uh, we're going to do things different today because, like I said before, uh, if you got the email for this, it it said in like the first sentence, this one's just for fun. So don't expect too much educational content. So if you're on your lunch break, wonderful. Uh, if you're not because it's like night or morning or whatever, uh, also wonderful because we're going to have fun. And we're going to give you all this stuff too so that way you can play with your friends. Now, the people who have reached out to us and said, I have no friends and I have no one to play with, uh, potentially we could work on a mobile app version of this where you could play the computer. That's not as much fun. Like actually trash talking another human being like I'm about to with Ed here in a few seconds is a lot more fun. Than that. So are we taking bets on who's going to win? Oh, Jason. Jason. Deb, Deb's going for Jason, huh? <laughs> yeah. He, I don't know what he, what, what innate <laughs> skills that he has that he just destroys me every time we play test. So, yeah, all right, I'll, I'll all give right. it the I old a, try. So I historically speaking, I have won nine out of like ten times. Yes. Right. So so I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna vote for the underdog here. I got one Ethereum on you here, so don't lose. Ooh, that's uh, a good one. That is that's a good one. contract. That is, you said it live <laughs> and it was recorded. That's <laughs> that's 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 
Jason's gonna be like, I don't have any Ethereum. <laughs> oh, oh no, I'm not, I'm not paying that. Okay, all right. So for everyone joining us here today, welcome to this Black Hills Information Security webcast. Today is gonna be different. It could have been a live stream. We could have done this on Twitch. We could have done it on just YouTube. And if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for joining us. Uh, if you're watching the recording, well, cool. Because uh, then you can learn how to play competitive backdoors and breaches. And we're putting all the assets into our Discord server. Uh, so you can go ahead and snag them from there. So today we're going to show you how to play and we're going to teach you how to install the things. And if you hear construction in the background, that's just some construction in the back. It's not me. I don't have IBS. That's. And if you did, it would be okay. We still love you. And we still would Thank like you, it. All right. So what we're going to do today is we're all we're all keeping our cameras on. If if you're used to being here, then normally somebody presents with slides, and those slides are available, and we have those slides available. Uh, what we're going to do is Ed and I are going to play the game, and you can ask all the questions that you want to ask while it's happening. You can post gifs and memes if Ed or I do something that's wonderful or terrible when it comes to the game. Uh, but we're going to get started, and we're going to play right now. Uh, so if you have any questions to get started, like, how do I get this? What are you using right now? We're using Tabletop Simulator. Uh, this is, like, Tabletop Simulator costs money, right, Ed? Yeah, it's, like, standard is, like, 20 bucks. But if you keep an eye out, like, on Humble Bundle, you can get it for 5 10 bucks sometimes. It's, it's totally worth it. Um, a lot of people think that Tabletop Simulator is just, like, to play cards or dominoes or checkers or chess. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. And the real, like awesome thing about tabletop simulator is the workshop mods and any board game you can think of has been recreated in tabletop simulator and generally speaking you can play all of those games for free so n name a tabletop game that you like settlers of Catan, uh robo rally dominion whatever it's it's in doors and breaches <laughs> yeah yeah i put that in there for us yeah um, so don't search backdoors and breaches. Like search Black Hills, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> if you search B H I S, you'll find the. <laughs> Be specific. I'm sure the mod has gotten extreme. Let's just put it that way. Uh, yeah. So search for B H I S. Yeah. yeah. All right. So Ed and I are going to get started. You go ahead and watch. You're going to spectate today, and then we're going to give you the the assets. There's cheat sheets in Discord. There's also cheat sheets here on. Um, Go to webinars so you can download those and the handouts so you can grab those files you can go ahead and take a look at those and it will show you all the steps to be able to do that the files are here we're going to have some zip folders that are available for zip files where you can download those uh, and then yeah so ed let's go ahead and get started i'm going to be purple dice your blue dice i am you know player one down here at the bottom your player two up at the top yep and to get started you roll the dice to see who goes first but there's an important aspect to that because when you roll the dice to go first, you see how much money you get to put in your budget. Now, the budget will come into play later if you're ever defending. Most people never do. Uh, but if you have to defend yourself, then the budget could be helpful. So, Ed, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to roll the dice for me. And I got a four. So I, I got, got 19. Four. Yeah, that's that's great. I'm happy for you. One of those is better than the other. Yeah. Oh, this All right, so Ed, you can go first. Uh, we're going to have 24 turns to try to steal each other's points. Now, whoever has the most points at the end of 24 turns wins, but if he steals all my points before 24 turns, then Ed has won. Now, to get started, what Ed's going to do is establish his kill chain, and you have to do it in order, starting with initial compromise, and then you go to persistence, and then you go to pivot and escalate, and then you go to command and control. Now, Ed can either choose a card at random or Ed can choose the card that he wants to choose to be the initial compromise. So I'm going to zoom in over here and see that he's trying to do an external cloud access attack to get my initial compromise. So he must have taken Bo's training class and he feels pretty confident about this. So yeah, ahead, I don't Ed. think you've got your seam tuned correctly, so right. I'm not going to catch this. Okay. And that is a 20, sir. So All that's right. exceeds. So that does succeed. So an 11 through 20 is successful. 1 through 10 is unsuccessful. Now, a 20 does nothing for you if you're attacking. It, like You already have the advantage of being an attacker, so it does nothing for you. But a 20 can do something for you while you're defending. All right, so now that you've established your initial compromise, you can move on to the next phase, which is persistence. You don't have to stop if you're attacking because in real life, if you're attacking, you don't have to stop. 
once you get past the initial compromise. So now it's time That's for persistence. Ability features, I think okay. here should work. That was now, a... Does the card matter? No, nah, like it does and it doesn't. Uh, you can choose whatever type of attack that you want to do. It's essentially all cards are equal. Uh, so no card does more than another card. So, all right, so go ahead and roll the dice to see if that is successful for you. Big 20 here. No Three. Worries. So that doesn't oh, succeed. Does not. All right, so that means his turn is over. So he hits the, the turn number and my turn begins. So I'm going to try to establish my kill chain. So I'm just going to grab the card on top, which happens to be credential stuffing. I'm going to hit the roll the dice and see I get a 13. So I have established that. So now I'm moving on to the persistence, which is accessibility features, because I don't really care at this point. Whatever gets me <laughs> persistence is fine. I also rolled a three, and that stops my turn, and I hit the timer. So uh, not the timer, but the turn counter. So now it's Ed's turn to try to establish his kill chain. Let's try malicious drivers. Rolling. Those usually work. Here we go. 15. <laughs> okay, so that works. Now he can move on to pivot and escalate, which is the yellow cards. Okay, let's try access token manipulation. Ooh, access token manipulation. One of the new cards from the uh, expansion deck. I love it. You know, speaking of expansion, I did see a few people in the audience who actually have consulted cards in this uh, in the standard edition of this game. <laughs> so we got some famous uh, people watching us. There we go. All right, so that stops. You no longer have. So I'm going to try to go with my accessibility features again because I'm a creature of habit, and I rolled an 18, so we're good. Now I'm going to go to my pivot and escalate. Did you Here hit your uh, counter? I think so. Okay. I started, so I think this will be four when you're done. All right, I got a 10. 10 is not enough. So I'm stopped right here. I'm going to hit my counter, and we're done. If you're like, this game's not fun at all. Well, you have to establish your kill chain to That's start true. stealing points. So. Uh, and uh, the angry talked, intern, uh, go ahead. I was going to ask that question. He just wanted to confirm. So in the competitive version, both players are attackers, right? That is. Uh, both players are attackers and defenders. Now, I don't need to defend right now because he hasn't established his kill chain. But once he does establish his kill chain, then I can defend to try to knock out a piece of his kill chain. And then he would have to reestablish it in order to steal points from me again. So. Yeah, yeah, we found through playtesting that just being offensive, much like in real life, is just, it's very advantageous. I'm going to roll for local Privesk. Okay. And that's Ooh. 17. That succeeds. Yeah. I'm so happy for you. Let's see. <laughs> you uh, sound let's... Happy. Yeah, I'm changing let's... my, who I'm. Who I'm betting to win. <laughs> you think, I, you think <laughs> Ed's going to win? All right. I hope so. I we'll do I get Gmail, to... G, Gmail, Tumblr, Salesforce, Twitter as C2. Okay, that's a, that's a really useful way of doing C2. And I then rolled a four. So I think now is where I'm going to establish my kill chain and then steal all of Ed's points. But it usually happens that way, yeah. All right, so I'm going for local privilege escalation, and I'm going to roll the dice here. And ah, oh, I thought it was going to be that 18, but it's a five, so... I spoke too soon, and did we hit the counter last time? Uh, I think we're probably, uh, you ended your turn just now, so I think we're on six. Okay, okay I'm going to try HTTP as XFIL this time. And that's a 14, so that's good. Okay. okay, so now that Ed has established his kill chain, he gets one more turn. And whatever he rolls this time, if you, you subtract 10 from it, uh, so anything above 10, you subtract 10 from it, and that's how many points he's about to steal from you. So if he rolls a 19, he steals nine points. If he rolls a 10, he steals nothing. If he rolls a three, then his turn's just over. So go ahead and see how many points you can steal from me. Ah, that was fancy. 18. So that's, so that's not great. That is not great at all. Uh, Actually, so it's, very, it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to subtract eight points from me, which gives me seven. 
Yeah. And I have I have a gentleman's twenty three. Okay. So yeah. rem reminder, the game is over either at twenty four turns, and whoever has the most points or who steals all the points first loses. All right, so now that he has his kill chain established, I'm going to see if I can take out a piece of it. So I'm going to go through my deck here, and I'm going to find the Rita card. So I'm going to search through and see if I can find the Rita card. There we go. And I'm going to bring this over here into my defense. Now, I, it doesn't really cost me anything to use the Rita card. I'm just going to uh, use it now. But what happens is I have to roll 11 through 20 to knock out his C2 and Exfiltration card. Yeah. If I can do that, then he can no longer steal points from me until he reestablishes his skill chain. And I'm going to use my Rita card as one of my defense cards right now. And I'm going to roll the dice. Now, you'll see what happens if I don't, if I'm not successful. So here we go. But I was. So 15 knocks out his C2 and Exfiltration card. And now it is burned. You can't use it anymore. So that card is gone. And so that ends my turn. I don't get to attack on this turn. I don't get the chance to establish my kill chain on this turn. I could only defend on this turn. But what if you failed that roll, Jason? Now, let's say if I rolled, uh, I don't know, if I roll again, see if it's not good. Uh, no, that's still good. Now, let's try again. <laughs> You're too good. See, now we know it's loaded. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's say I rolled a six. Now, if I rolled a six, well, that's less than you know what I need to be successful, but in Competitive backdoors and breaches, what happens is you get money or points from your budget if you're unsuccessful while defending, because the only time we ever get money in security is when we're unsuccessful. That's a fact. You know, that just <laughs> too real. Let that sink in for a minute. All right. So I used up my turn to do the kill chain. So I think I hit the counter. Uh, so yep. I defended, knocked out your kill chain, so you have to reestablish your kill chain in order to steal my points again. Okay, well, we lost HTTP as XFIL, so let's try HTTPS as XFIL. Let's, let's make it even more fancy. Mm. And that's oh. 20. Mm. Doesn't do anything special, but ouch. Because mm. uh, he now gets the roll and... Now that this kill chain is established again, he gets one more roll. And big 20. And I'm so 14. happy for you. Uh, so he gets four of my <laughs> points. It's 14 minus 10, which is four. So I'm now down to three points. So that's are you are you really happy for me, Jason? Or are you just saying that? I am well? so like I've won so much, Ed. <laughs> it's true. He <laughs> wants you to have that. that. I'm, I'm really excited about this Ethereum that Jason's going to have to pay me. <laughs> well, he made this bet. It's binding. I didn't realize it. Ethereum is one of the good ones, too, right? Uh, yeah. This time I'm going for credential stuffing. Let's just see if a different attack does anything that, for me. That would work, matter. too. I, I refuse to use a password manager. Ah, I rolled a five, so still nothing. I not established. So Ed gets... Now, when Ed rolls this time, he just gets to steal, steal my points because he already has his kill chain established. I didn't want to defend. I just wanted to see if I could attack because at this point, yeah. uh, so I'm going to hit the counter. Oh, no, I, I incremented it. Oh, did you? So, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I forgot to the last time, and then it was, uh, I think we're at 10. I don't think you're going to need 24 turns, though. I'm pretty sure he's going to take you out right now. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Uh, yeah, that be nice. Eight, not enough. Oh, eight, so that does nothing. So now it's just the <laughs> turn is over. It so goes happy. back to me. Uh, and I get to try to establish my kill chain again. <laughs> and here we go. Is that a five? How can I roll three fives in a row? It, okay. Huh. So now it's Ed's turn. That's the end of my turn. Uh, did you hit the counter? No, I didn't. Uh, but thank you. You rolled uh, a five, five, which is great. That does nothing. So that's the end of Ed's <laughs> turn. So I'm going to bring mine back over. And if you're like, this game's boring. No, no. Is that a five? It's a six. That's terrible. All right, so there's this thing that if Ed rolls a one at any time while Ed's attacking, he loses so his bad. whole kill chain. Mm -hmm. So just go ahead, Ed. Roll again. <laughs> that's what ha normally happens to Ed, is he rolls a one. That's true. Time. All right, I rolled an eight, so it's your turn now. 
So I'm gonna... so, someone in the chat's asking you about N NFTs. Do you, Deb, do you think we could get that picture of uh, Mole Jason as an NFT <laughs> and possibly? Oh. I do like <laughs> no, no, no one knows what I'm talking about. So. Except <sighs> the three of us. <laughs> Everyone that's watching right now is like, this rolling is terrible. Well, that is true. It happens. All right, so Ed, it's your turn. Okay. We're going to go play Magic the Gathering. Nine. Nine. That does nothing. So once this, again, this worst case scenario. Now mm -hmm. I could have defended at any of these times. Seventeen. You got it. Ooh. You got All it. All right. Exfiltration over a physical medium. <laughs> One of the new uh, expansion deck cards. This is an awesome card. <laughs> All right, Ed. You still have three points to steal for me, and so far you haven't done it yet. So. I'm trying. Five. Five. All right, gonna try to steal it through my socks by downloading everything to a USB. Got it. I, I'm established. I have established my kill chain, which means my next turn could potentially steal points from Ed here. Oh. And that's 20. That's a 20. So 20 minus 10, that's oh. 10 points for me. So I'm up to a 13. I'm oh, down close. to 17. Oh, right. So at this point, it's just. Who can uh, roll the best till the end? That's true. All right, Ed. 13. All right, so you take three points of mine. That is the end of your turn. And now it's my turn. Six. Well, I don't even know why I woke up. <laughs> Here, I'll do the turn for you and then roll. 17. Ah. Give me those points. Give me those back. So happy for you. <laughs> 21. Why don't you seem as happy as I think you are? Nice. Oh, Ooh, so mm. close. You could almost taste it. So four for me. As long as I have more points than Jason in, in, in three rounds uh, or yep. two more rounds, then we're good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 19. Oh, that, that well, seems like a that seems like a really good thing to roll, Jason. That, that is yeah, the, pretty high. That is the end of that game. So, is the well end. done. Good job, Ooh. team. Good Ed job. That Sashi and all right. So I'll send you that uh, Ethereum address, Jason. Hold on one second. <laughs> Everyone, congratulate Ed for that victory. Uh, well that. Done. Finally. Congratulations. Finally. So yeah, you're gonna win. You gotta win. Here. You gotta win while it's live. Yeah. All right. So a couple of things that did not happen. One, we didn't roll a one, uh, which would kill the whole kill chain. So if I rolled a one, then what happens is my while attacking, if I roll one while attacking, it kills and burns my entire kill chain, and I have to start from scratch. Uh, it's so that is, it is, and it happens often, uh, mm -hmm. more often than you think. Uh, I did defend one time, so I found the card I wanted to defend with. Why did I pick the Rita card? Because if you take a look at the attack cards, you'll see what detects them. So you want to grab one of the detections or procedures that detect those card or that type of attack. And then that, if you roll successfully, then it wipes out that type of attack. Now, the question that I got asked uh, during the during the match was, where are the inject cards? Uh, you don't need them. So whenever you play competitive backdoors and breaches, your deck, you get rid of the, the inject cards and consultant cards if you're using those. So we only use the attack cards and the pen cards. Uh, what other questions do we have? Uh, so if you have the a budget, what about the, uh, the, the budget? Yeah. Oh, the budget. Okay. So the budget wasn't used either. So uh, Ed, go ahead and roll your dice again. So I'm going to roll mine. So this time I rolled a 16. So that means I would start with a budget of 16. So if I was using my Rita card and I was defending against his C2 and I rolled a nine, uh, so nine minus 10, nine, 10 minus nine. Uh, so I would take one from my budget because I get one point because it's 10 minus nine when you're defending. Take one and I would add it to my points. As a reminder, you only get money in security when you fail. So if I fail in defending, then I get that from my budget to add to my points. And so that is uh, it's one of the, the rules that we added while we were in Reno. It makes the game a lot more fun. It also gives a lot more. Um, more balanced. Yeah, more balanced, more importance to, to the, the first roll. 
All right. Uh, there are some um, so I think it's important to say that these are like house rules that we've come up with and that you guys can add and change. Um, because there was a, a question: Are there advantage cards you can play during a round that lets you roll twice until your chain is over? It's possible. I would say that would, could be a good house rule. Uh, why did I only defend once? So I only just decided to defend once. I could have kept defending, but at some point I'm not going to be able to steal his resource points. And he took so many of my resource points from that first roll where he took, I think it was like nine or eight or something. Yeah. Where you took so many points and I was like down and I was like, well, I need to steal more points back. Or, and I also didn't have a lot for my budget. So there's times where if you have like 14 points in your budget, because that first roll you get a 14, well then failing is good. Because uh, you're going to try to get that money out of you. Either you're going to be successful in knocking out the kill chain or you fail and you can get some of that money out of your budget. Uh, so I think people want us to play again. But what I want to do is, Ed, uh, I'm going to let you help you be the uh, I'm going to make you the presenter. Okay. And then if you could show people where to download the files here for uh, Tabletop Simulator, if they want to use this version. OK. Uh, is this, are we presuming that people already have a tabletop simulator installed and they just want to uh, be able to play black backdoors and breaches? No, let's go all the way from like you have to download Steam. Once you have Steam, then you get tabletop simulator. Then once you have tabletop simulator, then how do you get the that part? Uh, so I'm going to make you presenter. Let me know when you're ready to be a presenter. Sure. Um, yeah, go ahead, I guess. Uh, the angry intern said, when you add points from the budget, does your opponent's points go down? No, it does not. Uh, so when I'm defending and I get and I, I fail, essentially, and I get points from my budget added to my own or yeah, points added from my budget to my points, it doesn't do anything to the the other player. It's only for me. That's how I can get money out of my budget. Ed, are you ready to present? Yes. All right, so I'm going to make you presenter. Make sure you share the proper screen. <laughs> I have one screen currently, so okay. let, let me know if I'm doing this correctly. You are. Thanks. So I see Steam right now. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, this is just going to be a basic primer on getting installed here. So you just go to store.steampower.com. You click up here on the top, install Steam. You'll create an account. You'll you'll get the uh, application installed on your PC. And then uh, once that's running, it looks very similar to the home page. Uh, to get Tabletop Simulator, just go here to the Store tab, start typing Table, and it'll be the first one that pops up. Looks just like this. Um, I can't tell how much it costs right now because I already own it, but it's probably $19.99 or something like that. Uh, there are a lot of good deals like on Humble Bundle that come out occasionally where you can get four copies for 20 bucks or uh, you know, 10 bucks a copy. So keep your eye out for those if uh, 20 bucks is a little too much for you. Uh, but once you've, once you've got Steam installed and once you have Tabletop Simulator installed, I'll, uh, let me back out of this. So this is what you're presented with. Um, a good way to just get started and to feel your way through how to get familiar with Tabletop Simulator is just to create a single player table. Now it comes by default with all these classic board games, but by no means should you assume that's what's really good about Tabletop Simulator. What's really good about Tabletop Simulator is the workshop. And as you can see here in my workshop, I have all of these different tabletop games that people have made and shared freely on the workshop that I've added to my library. And I can load any one of these and play with any one of my friends for free. So it's really cool. And But there are there is DLC that's uh, for uh, Tabletop Simulator, but you don't have to you don't have to buy any of this stuff. It's really cool that the studios are making content specifically for it, but the workshop is what's the most fun. And if you're in uh, Tabletop Simulator, you're here in the workshop. Yours will be blank because it's your first time playing it, and you can click Browse right here, and it'll open this like in-game browser, and this will take you to the workshop page. If you want to play Backdoors and Breaches, 
just type BHIS here in this search box. Yeah, use that. Mm -hmm. Use BHIS. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and, and it'll show both of the mods that we've created, the standard edition and then the competitive version. And on yours, it'll this check mark will be a plus sign. All you do is click that, and it will add it to your to your library. Then you just hit escape, and it'll show up right here in this workshop tab. Um, do you click on the competitive one and click load? Then it's going to go ahead and pull up exactly what Jason and I have been been playing. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all I got. Yeah. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, you can always ask it in Discord or go to webinar. Uh, but what we're going what we're going to do now is we're going to play the PlayingCards.io version of this. Now this is the free version that all of you can use. Uh, today. Also, we we made the playingcards.io file available inside Discord. So what I'm going to do now is, is take over presenter again. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Uh, so I'm going to take over presenter. And I'm using this computer. So let's go to playingcards.io and show this window. Uh, also, if you just lost video and you can't see us anymore, hit refresh on your browser and go to webinar and it will bring it back. If you can't see us or hear us, then I don't know how to fix that for you because you can't see us or hear us. <laughs> All right. So we have this playingcards.io version. And if I go down here, all the way down to the bottom, I can go to custom room. Now, when I go to custom room, it says, do you want to start a sample room or start a blank room? I'm like, blank room all day, every day. Um, and so I go over here and hit enter. And once I get to enter, I hit edit table. And then I'm going to bring this up a little bit to see easier. And then I'm going to go to import file. Now you're about to see some of the files I have on my computer. So I didn't sanitize uh -oh. that. that. That's totally Ooh. fine. Uh, and I'm going to import this oh, wow. file now. Now this there, file is available. We did, create, we did create quick start guides to walk you through all of this too, if Jason's a little fast. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Now I'm going to share this link with Ed <laughs> and Ed only. But all of you are probably going to show up here in the next few seconds, uh, and that's okay. But the thing I would like you to do is open your own playingcards.io version and import your own file into your own custom room, in your blank room, because that would be a whole lot better for the rest of us. Uh, so we have this version here that all of you have access to. I'm going to send the link over to Ed inside of our teams chat i don't know if he's got teams i've got it i'm in all right so then ed's going to join me and i see a yeah i see it. there's a few people there that that are not ed and that's okay <laughs> but as you look around right now it is pretty much the exact same interface so i have a yeah yeah there you are look at all of you those all those are somebody else so uh, we have the spinner wheel over here uh, we have the points, so if I roll 15, then I can establish my budget of 15 points. And then from there, Ed would then spend his, and then he would establish his budget. If you want to do that as player one, I'll be player two this time. Sure. Uh, let's see. Let's. Uh, okay, I'm going to remove that person. You know, you did this to yourself by sharing <laughs> that link. <laughs> okay, I'm now seated here. Uh, are you seated at player two? I'm player two. I'll be player two. Uh, let's, even though it's disconnected. Let's roll our spinners to see who goes first and to establish our budget. <laughs> okay, I got two. And got a two. So there's no reason for you to ever defend the rest of this game because it's not going to help you. But for me, defending would be something that would be helpful. Yeah. So I'm just going to go down here. Now, I can't search through these like I can. I could like drag them over here if I wanted to to find something specifically and then I guess I could hold the button down and put them all back over here. Uh, but same rules. Uh, I go first because I rolled a 15. I'm going to see if I can establish my kill chain. I got a 13. Now I go over to persistence and see if I can establish that. I rolled a 15. Uh, well, that shouldn't be there. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to roll this. I rolled a 16. And now I'm going to see if I can establish my C2. And I rolled a 19, so what, I just established my kill chain. What generous we have on this one? Yeah. Uh, now I'm going to see if I can steal any points. And I steal four points. So, Ed, you just lost four points, and I gained four points. So I'm at Yay. 19 on the very first turn. So I go over here, and my turn is done. All right, Ed? 
Uh, okay. Let's try to establish my kill chain. I'll start with the fish. And I rolled a six, and that did not succeed. Now it is your turn. Uh, and uh, Johnny C said, can I choose to defend before the kill chain is established? You can, but there's nothing to defend against. So, uh, Oh, yeah. yeah. So you can defend at any time. So as soon as Ed gets even the initial compromise in, he could totally defend. Like, I don't know why Ed's not defending now, but essentially it's because he lost some points already and he's got nothing in his budget. So defending for him does him almost no good whatsoever at this point. So I get to then establish. Now, what he's hoping for is I roll one. If I roll one, that just kills my kill chain. And then I got to start from scratch. But you just lost three more points and I gained three more points. So we're at 22. And Ed, you're at three less than 11. So. Okay, I'm. I actually am gonna defend. I think I'm gonna look. For, I'm like I'm gonna try. I'm gonna establish firewall. Firewall log review because that okay. will defend against two of your cards. Okay. Now, if he rolls a 20 while defending, he will knock out all the cards that have that type of detection available on my attack card. So that's why he picked this firewall log review because if he uses it and somehow rolls a 20, he'll knock out two of my attack cards all at once. Yeah, contrary to what you've seen so far, there there is some strategy to this. <laughs> okay, here's my roll. Let's see. And it's a three. So, so what he what you now get is all your points from your budget though. Uh, but do I I leave this card out, right? Yes, you get to keep it for the rest of the game. Now I got so, two more points. That is correct. Those might be the two points that win you this game. That's true. All right. So my kill chain is still established. I'm gonna go in for a kill. I rolled a three, nothing. That turn is over, so I'm going to hit the turn button. All right, next. I think I will try to establish my kill chain again. Okay. And that's a five. Not good. All right, so I'm going to go in for the kill. Hopefully, I can just roll a 20 right now. Oh! oh! Nice. Explain what happens when a one comes up. All right, so if I roll one while attacking, I just burned all of my cards and I just lost my whole kill chain. So I have to start from scratch now. So if you roll a one while attacking, you burn your whole kill chain. It's the equivalent of like, let's say you're actually hacking someone and they catch they catch all of it and just burn all of your abilities. So I am out. All right, Ed, you're back in this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go fishing again. Uh, that 17? was the end of my turn, nice. too. So we're at turn. <laughs> Let's someone go just, accessibility features. Someone just moved my counter. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Uh, so, Zykurity uh, reminded you that you can hit F11 and it makes your browser full screen so they can't see. I mean, it doesn't matter now, but for the future. Okay. Local progress. 16. Here we go. Let's go. Exfil over physical medium. Is Ed going to make a comeback? Oh. 12. All right. So Ed has established his kill chain. That means his next turn will be stealing points for me if he rolls above a 10. No, nothing. So I got to reestablish my kill chain again. So let's start from scratch. <laughs> And I did roll, so let's move on to persistence. And I got a let's move on to privilege escalation. Ooh. Nice, nice. And let's move on to C2 and Xville. Oh! All right. Jeez. And this one is to steal points. That is two points from Ed. Good one, two. two. Good job. <laughs> now I could defend because I got tons of stuff in my budget. That's true. But I'll wait to see if you actually get any of my points first. Well, we'll find out right now. Five points. Uh, so Ben said uh, this this seems to really favor the attacker. For realism's sake, I think each player should start with some amount of defense. So you have all the defense that you want. If you bring out these cards, you can use these. It's They're not going to hurt you at all. Uh, so your defend cards are there. Uh, you just have to choose to either do it at the beginning of your turn, but if you do defend on your turn, you don't get to attack on your turn. You only get to choose one or the other. Since we both established kill chains at this point, one of us might want to attack. Did you roll a 15? I did. Did you take five points away? Yeah. I did not. So I'm down to 19. Okay. I think we're, are we on nine now? Did, didn't you start? Uh, yeah, I started. 
I think we're on 10 now. Okay, so I want to take out your initial compromise. So I'm going to look for my SIM card in here somewhere. Okay. That's the one part about playing playingcards.io is I don't have a search function. So I'm looking for my SIM card. Yeah, it's challenging, but this is a really accessible and free way for anyone to play this game. Yeah. So like I'm, I'm glad I use my SIM card. Tabletop SIM is not everyone has a copy of it. Yeah. God, oh, jeez. It was way <laughs> down there. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try to defend right now. I'm using my SIM card, and I'm going to try to knock out his initial compromise of fish. Now, I can do that because it says detections are detectable by SIM cards. So if I roll, I rolled an 11. So I was successful. So your initial compromise card is now gone. So you have to reestablish it before you can steal my points again. Okay. I'm going to increment the turn. Are you done? Mm -hmm. Okay. And, now uh, we're and, on. and Ben, uh, to answer your question, you can pull these out at any time. Like that, I could put all three cards out if I wanted to. I, I'm just choosing to take one card out and defend with it. Like you start with defense defenses. There's just no reason to use them until it's time to defend. And Ashmato asks about strengths. And I think the thing with defense and being able to wipe out multiple attack cards comes in the uh, rolling a 20 as a defender. Now, some people have talked about like maybe let's say you roll a 15 and above and that takes out multiple cards. Or let's say, you know, how strong you roll takes out. Well, we're giving you the here's the basic rules. And at that point, if you want to make house rules when you play, that's totally fine. Uh, no, I didn't spend any of my budget to use the SIM card because I already had it in my, like, it's something, it's one of the capabilities I already have. So it doesn't cost me anything for my budget, doesn't cost me anything in my points. It's just a card that I choose to use when I want to do my defense. We have played in the past where uh, defense cards cost you money, uh, but what that means is nobody ever wants to use them. Yes, Bob. Hey, quick, quick question. I was just going to say there's like three spots for defense. Is there an advantage to having more than one out there? Nope. Because uh, right now uh, I pulled the SIM card because I'm looking at what cards he can that can use to take out. So I might want to use the endpoint analysis card, which could take out multiple cards, and then I would just dig through my pile to find my endpoint analysis card, which is right there, and then I could add that. Does it? The only reason that we put spots out there is because you had to put some, and what we've learned is that no one uses more than three defense cards. Uh, out of all the times you've ever played, no one's ever defended more than three times yeah so, so when, when you go to defend do you have to pick which one of those you're using yes okay gotcha yep can you explain the budget um there's some questions about people don't understand what or when to use the budget sure the the budget is used when you're defending and you fail what happens is that points will come away from your budget and be added to your overall point score uh, we did that because like when you're playing the game and you only have 15 points, like, well, what happens if you lose defending? Like you should get something. And so that's why we established the budget when we were playing, uh, when we created the game. Um, so the budget's established in the very first turn. So if you remember, Ed rolled a, a two, I rolled a 15. That's why I have 15 in my budget. So what turn are we on? I think it's my uh, turn. I think you just wiped out my fish card. That is right. I did that with my defense turn, which wiped out your fish. So you need to establish a kill chain or defend, because you could defend too and take out my kill chain. I think I'm going to establish uh, my kill chain again with insider threat. But hopefully, let's see. And that's an 18. And now I'm going to go for your points. Yeah. And that's 15. All right, so you took five of my points. I'm down to 14. Okay. So and I'm going to uh, try to use my endpoint analysis to take out your accessibility features card. Uh oh. So I'm going to roll here. And I rolled a 16, so it's burned. It. So you have to reestablish that before you play again. And let's go to okay. 15. Let's do event triggered malware to reestablish my kill chain. And that's a 20. Let's go for points. And that's 11, so one okay. point. So you're whittling me down here. <laughs> uh, so that's your turn. All right, yes. so I'm not going to defend because I've established my kill chain, so I'm going to go for, I took one point from Ed. 
up one, down one. Okay. I'm going to roll to attack. Seven, nothing. Nothing. All right, rolling to attack. Nothing. Here we go. Four. Nothing. Nope. Okay, attacking. Ooh. That is six. I'm up six. All right. Uh, increment this. <clears throat> and I'm going to attack back. Four. Not enough. All right. So I'm going to attack again. And that's four. Ooh. Let's see on my turn. Rolling. That's 18. Mm. So give me those eight points. <laughs> All right, so this is essentially my last turn. So the only thing I want to do now is, wow, we are tied. Yeah. This is it. I, I knew those two points were going to help you. Uh, if it is a tie at the end of 24 uh, turns, then we go into sudden death. The first person to score points wins. Right. All right so here we go. That's not great. <laughs> That's not great. All right. Last roll. Oh, 16. Oh, Let's go. You beat me twice on the stream today. Good for you. Good. <laughs> just just, just saving like it, one. man. All right. All right. So that is how you play using this version. Congratulations, Ed, on your second win today. Uh, good job. You're never going to win again. You know this, right? You are. Those are so if you're like, what did we just do? If you want this file, it is located inside Discord. You go to playingcards.io. So we do that. And then once we get the playingcards.io, we scroll all the way down to the bottom. We go to custom room. We get to the custom room, we say start blank room. And then once we get here, we hit enter. And then we go to the edit table. You go to room options, import from file. It's the Pico file. Excuse me. Wow. Uh, the Pico file that we dropped onto uh, the Discord server. And then that gives you everything that you need. And then what you do is you take this link right here and you give it to the one person you want to play. So you give it to the one person you want to play and then they can enter into the game and then they can play too. Uh, it's actually an easier way to do this. <laughs> I just realized if you go just to playingcars.io and right above the custom room it says import a game file and you can import it right in there at the bottom of all those games yep right there up a little bit oh here no scroll up right there oop right there oh. <laughs> yeah oh then i just dropped the file oh. here yeah so we'll fix that <laughs> success cool. success that. All right. That's a little easier. So that is also how you can play. Now, why are we doing this? Well, we have seen people play this game at conferences, and one, it gives you a reason to sit down and talk with somebody. Like that's this is the main thing. When Joshua Wright, who was the keynote speaker at Wild West Hack and Fest, sat down to play this game, from a person who sat in his keynote was like, "This is really cool that I get to play with you." And then they started talking about security. They started talking about what is this card and what does it do and why am I establishing a kill chain? Like, what is the kill chain? Well, you have the initial compromise, the foreign persistence, you have the C2 and exfiltration, you have pivot and escalation. Like, you have all these techniques. And then, well, what about these defense cards? Like, why am I using those? Well, that can help stop or detect this type of attack. And then that gets burned and the attackers have to do something else. And so that's why we created this game because it's like, when you're at a con and you want to talk to somebody or if you're online, you want to play with someone, we created rooms here on the Discord server where you can play with people. And we're hoping like that's what happens now. Like there's 443 of you here now that know how to play this game. And you can just go into the Discord channels and start playing on it. Uh, and so I really hope you do that. And that they're there now for you to be able to play. And it has room for two people to go into those Discord server rooms. And you can just bring up your own file like this and share the link out with the other person. And then the two of you can play this game. Jason, um, can I say something? Yeah. I've, I've seen people in the chat talking about 
how we can improve the mechanics for PvP. And if people want to play test with their friends and come up with house rules and maybe help us improve the mechanics of the PvP, uh, we're totally open to that. That would be great. So if you have ideas or you want to test out some different ideas with your friends and then let us know in Discord, uh, yeah, we'd be glad to uh, to check out your ideas because we, we think it's fun and we're always open to making it a better game. Um, someone asked if we'll ship the physical cards to Asia. We absolutely will. Uh, we will even eat the cost of shipping them to Asia. Uh, so we normally only charge a few dollars and that like helps cover the cost of us doing it, but, but we have the, uh, if you go to Black Hills info site, and then you go to community up here, and then click on the Spearfish General Store, that will bring up the store where you can get these. Now, they won't be available again until the end of September, because we are in between printings, and Wild West Hacking Fest is next week, and so if you're going to Wild West Hacking Fest, uh, we have a lot of work to do for that, um, but if you want to wear the shirt that I'm wearing today, it's right there. Look at that. Hey. It's a summertime shirt. Summertime. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that is where you can find that. And so if you want to get the physical decks, now you don't have to. Like the whole point of this is that you don't have to get the physical decks. You can play this virtually anytime you want to for free. There is no cost to this. So that way you and your friends or colleagues or teammates can play this as a game uh, or a team building exercise, or it's just fun to play when you're like waiting for the next alert to happen in the sock and you're like, hmm, we have nothing else going on. And when like the manager walks by, like, what are you doing? You're like, I'm learning cybersecurity. <laughs> okay. And, and I, I use this with my students too. I teach at a community college. And if you're a student or learning about security or getting into cybersecurity, just flip through the deck. If you see something that you don't understand or that's new to you, that should be like a good jumping off point to learning about like a really awesome tool or, or a tactic or technique. Like this, this game can definitely have a lot of educational value, so. Yeah. Now, uh, this is not the traditional way to play. Like, no, I think no. that was what was No, a couple of people have asked if there's a single player version. And there's no. not. <laughs> we haven't thought of that. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, Brian just asked, would it be all right to use the BNB playmat as a LinkedIn banner graphic? Absolutely. Uh, we mm -hmm. also made the, like, we have physical playmats now, and but we're not selling them. Like, that's, we we really have a hard time with capitalism like we really do like we proudly suck at it because we want to just give away as much as we can uh like our goal is to break even at black hills like that's the thing we we just want to stay in business so we can keep doing fun stuff so if you go to the discord server and you click on the bnb playmats like uh, i'm going to share it on the screen right now just so that way you can see it for sure uh we have the playmats available for like all you have to do is download the image file so this one right here is that first image file, and then you can grab this and you can print it out at Ink Gaming. Uh, but if you want to have the small one so that you can just throw it in your backpack to take with you to a con and be able to play with people at Lobby Con or Bar Con, you can just do that. And this is for the physical version of the game. You just need one other person to have a deck. So if you had two decks and you're like, hey, you want to sit down and play Backdoors and Breaches with me? And the person's like, how do you play that? And you're like, well, here you go. Uh, so here's a deck. Here we're going to play. I get to attack. You get to attack. We all get to attack. Uh, we're going to roll the dice here. We got some chips. I normally play with poker chips because it just feels better and it's a lot more fun. We had these poker chips at Deadwood, which were really cool. Uh, so if you played with us in Deadwood, you got mm -hmm. a poker chip like that. And that's it. I may, I may have a few of those chips. <laughs> Yeah, we left them on the table, and I think people thought they were our swag. <laughs> is the non-competitive version available for playing cards? It is. Yes. Uh, so if you go to the virtual solutions over here, uh, we have a Pico or playing cards .io version of the original way to play table um, backdoors and breaches. The only thing is the person who's been updating it, uh, they didn't update it with the new the new cards from the expansion deck. So I think we have to just make our own version and add it. So. Mm -hmm. We're going to totally make a updated version of the traditional way of playing backdoors and breaches available on PlayingCards.io. If I have six decks, do I need three maps? <laughs> Dieter. Yeah. <laughs> PCO, not equals Pico. Yeah. All right. Uh, any questions? Like, thank you for joining us here today when 
we had this week free on the schedule, uh, generally because it's the week before Wild West Hacking Fest, but when Wild West Hacking Fest became virtual, it was, um, it was different work for us to do. And so we had the time available and we're like, all right, uh, what are we gonna do? And like, how about we just play and show people how to play competitive backdoors and breaches and just give away all the free way to play it. And we're like, okay, yeah. Uh, so we did that. And that's why we did today's webcast, uh, to have fun and to show you this new way of playing backdoors and breaches. And yeah. Uh, hopefully you liked it and if you find ways to improve it let us know and if you didn't yeah. like it well you probably already left so. <laughs> <laughs> and we will be reaching out individually too everyone. yes individually <laughs> emails will be coming out don't worry uh so hack to near so is this an evolution of pivots and payloads or is this a separate game still so pivots and payloads is still its own game if you're like what is pivots and payloads what i is have it? a thing i have a thing for alliteration uh, and payloads is a game that I created at Sands, and I wanted to make a game, but I, I I couldn't. I could only make a poster. So I was like, how how? What if I just turn a poster into a game? So this is the game. I don't think I'm sharing right now. I just realized I'm not sharing. Uh, so I'm going to share now. If you can't see my screen anymore, just hit refresh. This is a a physical poster I made when I worked at Sands, uh, and if Kim was standing next to me right now she's like you made jason you made no i i project managed and produced make. so is there a rule that every game that you make has a not safe for google search uh name uh, is, that like a, is that a policy or is that just something that you're going with? that's a just great question to find an infosec <laughs> just just curious that's all Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. Okay. You know what? It does. It does just make it more tantalizing, right? Well, like the first time I ever gave a talk at a con, it was called "How to Social Engineer Your Way into Your Dream Job." And as soon as everyone came in, I was like, "All right, everybody, I'm not really going to be talking about that. What I'm going to talk about is uh, ways to job hunt." Uh, I just came up with that name because I knew you would show up for it. And... Oh. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> you hacked me, man. You hacked me. Now I'm looking for this thing. <laughs> uh, Bo, you look like you have questions. What questions does Bo ask? Look at he's got like four. Yeah, he just he, look, he looks stunned right now. I was I was trying to I was trying to re remember what was the other version? What cubicles and compromises, right? Yes. Or yeah, 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 cubicles and compromise. That wasn't anything to do with me. Like when I showed up to Black Hills and I was like, so what do you what have you all been doing over the years? And I found this thing called cubicles and compromise. Like what is this? Uh, and so then like I, we got to change that name. <laughs> it became back to the bridges. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, totally and the good. reason we like I couldn't call it cubicles and compromises because it was too many syllables and it was. <laughs> <laughs> See, it I was knew about the name. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I can't say it like cubicles and compromises. Uh, and the logo was so like uh, like short and long and i couldn't get it to work so that's why it's back to and breaches everybody because the logo is are. easier uh any any last questions before bo and i play around mm. <laughs> oh bo's going down oh man <laughs> going down for real are you trying to win at least one time is, this... <laughs> is that that's got that's gotta be what he's doing right yeah that is what he's doing he's trying to take one win out of the day he doesn't you know you gotta you gotta take your wins and he he hasn't got one <laughs> now if you're like well shouldn't shouldn't uh ed get to play because he he won no no <laughs> <laughs> is it so ed? i just gave bo the link all right bo you sent me a link where uh, i put it in teams okay hold on um are you sure i don't i don't have it you know what i didn't <laughs> oh, you know what i lied i totally didn't i there totally did not i totally did all right, all right. Yeah. let's go I supervise that's good hmm. all right so here we go uh, we're gonna spin see who um, goes first i'll be player two do you want to share it on the screen or oh, oh, God. Oh, <laughs> just wait until you're started and then F11. Oh, you see, you already did it again. Yeah. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. So now, Ed, quick, jump in so you can play this for me. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I'll, just, I'll just talk like I'm actually doing it. <laughs> All right. So no one can rewind the 
Now, if you're watching the recording, like, hi, hello, person watching the recording. Uh, <laughs> you didn't get to go and try to hack this. All right, so I'm player two. You're player one. I'm going to roll okay. to see who goes first. I got 10, so I put 10 in my budget. All right, looks like I got 10. Also 10. All right, so you go ahead and put 10 in your budget. Okay. And since we both rolled the same thing, uh, Bo, feel free to go first. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta start with like the red cards, right? Are you a little fish? How about that? That is correct. You have to go in and order then, of, the and then I'll roll, right? Yep. And that didn't and work, right? Seven, so you put it back, back. in your deck. Okay, got it. So that was the end of your turn. So we hit the turn key, and now I go to bring your own exploded device. And... Did you say exploded device? <laughs> exploded. <laughs> I rolled a two, so nothing for me. That is the end of my turn. All right. Um. So. I, I don't even know what all the cards do. I like. I gotta. Okay, here. Let's do external cloud access. That's my thing. So that there makes we go. sense. Yeah. See you next time, Smithereens. Well, and ah. it doesn't work. <laughs> all right. So that's the end of your turn. It's my turn. You got a 15, so I can keep uh, going. To persistence. And nothing. So I am stopped right there. That's the end of my turn. Cloud access. Let's go. Come on. Seriously. Mm. All right. <laughs> I thought you were good this at that. Going well this is uh, going if you're, well attending, if, if you're attending Wild West Hackenfest next week, we are playing competitive backdoors and breaches for tournament style. Uh, so Ed's going to be in charge of that. So if you're going next week, I highly, highly recommend that you jump into the competitive tournament. We do have prizes. One of the prizes is, uh, I think it's going to be a playmat. Uh, so the playmat will be a prize. We'll have it physically printed and shipped to you. So if you win that, you get that. Now, will you sign that for people, Jason? No, it's going to come straight from the... Okay. <laughs> oh. Was it my turn? I think it was my turn. Yes. Yeah, you just... I, yeah. I established persistence. And I established... Oh, my gosh. Infiltration. And uh, pivot and escalation. And now I'm coming for your points. I established my kill chain. And that oh. is eight. So you take eight points away. I put eight points on mine. And we're this at 23. Wow. Seven. This is going that, great. Great. You could, defend. <laughs> you could defend right now if you wanted to. I um, could defend. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that would look, take away one of your cards, right? If I look if at you them were first, yeah. see All if right, you so can I, find a procedure that applies to multiple cards. That way you get the best potential uh, thing for your okay. deck. Okay. So I'm seeing fire a log review for two of them. Let's try that. All right. So if you roll a 20, you take out both of those at one time. So I have to find a defense card that does firewall review, right? Yep. Ah, oh, there, it, there is. it is. Okay. Cool. All right, sweet. Right, so and then you oh, get a roll uh, 11 through 20 is successful. One through 10 is unsuccessful. But if you roll one through 10, then you potentially get points from your budget. Okay. There we go. Two. You rolled a two. Oh. That means you get eight points from your budget added to your overall point. So you take eight from so your take budget. Eight from the budget. That is right. And then add it. And now everyone finally gets to see why the budget matters. Uh, okay. Um, uh, why okay. defending can be good sometimes because that might be the way that you get some stuff back. All right. Your turn, sir. All right. So it's my turn. I've established my kill chain still. You did not take it out because you did lose in your defense. So, ah, uh, 19. Mm. Mm. It's kind of hard. He he let the intern review the firewall log. Classic <laughs> rookie mistake. So take nine points away, right? Mm-hmm. That is correct. I add nine. If you would have not have defended, you would be dead and have Yeah. That is correct. If you want to defend it, you would. the angry intern says, "Do you have to take from your budget if you fail?" That is, uh, you have to take from your budget when you fail until you you've run out of uh, points in your budget. Okay. It's a good thing. I'm gonna try to defend again. Let's see how it goes. Uh, 17. Oh, that's great. So, so, which one were you going firewall? for? Is it so? Does it not take out both the firewall logs? Uh, Only or... if you roll a 20. Now, you uh, can have a household okay. that if you roll like a 15 and above, it will take out. Uh, because someone has mentioned that before, and they're like, hey, what if there's like strength to your rolling? Yeah, uh, but yeah. we stick with that 50 50 split, uh, just to get started, and then from there, you can modify it if you want to. All right, sweet. We well, can yeah, take out our chain. That was the end of your turn, and I think we're on turn six. So it's my turn. Oh, I've been clicking it. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot to turn. turn. 
All right, so I established my initial compromise again, and now I'm going to go for your points again. And I rolled a one. Oh, oh that means you can oh. roll. I just threw on the whole kill chain. Still in it. Still All right, we're going on the offensive. <laughs> we're going on the offensive. Where's my cloud attack again? All right, come on, extra cloud access. See, you're back in it now, right? You got like that second wind. You yeah. got this. Ah, uh, and it's 16. it worked. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Hold on. Let me yes. kind of get for mic here. All right. Event triggered malware. Uh, malware injection client software. Sorry, I haven't I haven't read all these. Oh, malicious email rules. That's another one. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. Here we go. Local provesque. Um. Token manipulation, internal spear phishing. I like that one. I might go with the internal spear phishing. Um, SMB weakness. Nah. <laughs> Am I saying the cred stuffing? Sorry, I'm like these are this that's like good. one of the first times I look at all these. Yeah. Clear text passwords and files. That's that's like super often. Let's let's go with clear text passwords and files. Find that. Right. All yes. Mm. All right, Jason. Here we go, man. All nice. right. C2 and X field time. Making a comeback. All right, so now I'm going to do, what is it, C2, right? Yep, C2 and X. So domain fronting, eh, it's kind of hit or miss these days. Azure's been banning, <laughs> banning accounts. I had to change a lab in my class because of that. <laughs> I like how Jason and I were just like min-maxing, yeah. like, bam, 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 and Bo's actually like getting into the spirit of like the it. game. All right, like so it. let's just go with this, the standard HTTPS uh, XL okay. for this one. And success. All right. But so your I'm next points, roll. Right? Yep. Your next roll goes for points. All right. Here we go. And fail. Nothing. All right. So I have to reestablish my kill chain, and that was the end of your turn. So insider threat, because I, if I was at your company right now, I would definitely be your insider threat. Uh, I'm gonna do a new user added, and that failed. I just don't right. know what I'm doing with computers. So <laughs> going on the offense again. Here we go. Thanks for coming, Sheldon. Oh, um, you did not steal anything that time, so I'm going to go for. Now I have so many points, that's why I'm not defending right now. Uh, but mm -hmm. if you were to knock out some of them, I'm like, ah, I should probably defend. Nothing. Yeah, uh, I'm going to keep. I keep reading these blogs on the user added. Finally, oh. it worked. So I'm going to move to C2 and exfiltration. Oh, oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh. oh man, it's not your day. It's not your day. Yes. All right, we're attacking. Oh. And twenty. Oh, that is a huge. So I get, I get ten yeah. points, right? That is correct. And I just lost ten. All right. All right. So now I could either try to defend and knock out your kill chain, but right now I, I'm going to stick with the, the. Um, or not. Or not. All right. Your turn. Let's go. Come on. Oh, 19. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's nine wow. points. The tides okay, have so turned. I'm, gonna, I'm going to defend. The tides have turned, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> All the and time. I'm going to use cyber deception to see if I can take out your clear text passwords yeah. and files. And I was successful. Success? So. Okay, so I gotta get rid of this one. And is it burned? Yeah, you put it in the burned. Yep. Okay. All right. Sweet. So, and until you until you establish your kill chain, you can't uh, to steal any more points. Right. All right. So Kerber roasting. What else we got? Broadcast multicast poisoning. That's a good option. Uh, ooh, internal password spray. Let's go with that. How messy your side is. <laughs> I know. Well, <laughs> it's working, right? Look at that. It's totally working. <laughs> It's All right, working. so now I can go back for the attack for points now, right? Uh -huh. Yep. I just noticed there's a couple of games going on Ooh, Discord in some of the, the sub rooms. There's oh, very cool. Awesome. Two groups playing right now. That's awesome. Okay. So uh, I rolled a 15. Yeah, so and uh, uh, another so five, Johnny right? asked the question that if you roll a one, if you roll one at any time establishing your kill chain, it kills the whole kill chain. So if I was doing it on you know, my second card or third card, or fir first card, or even if I was doing it on my fourth card, it burns the card you are trying to use and everything that comes before it. So rolling a one whenever defending just kills everything all at once. Did I just lose five? Did I take my five yep. away? My yeah, you gotta eight? take five away. Mm -hmm. So happy for you. 
Yeah. All right. Was... You're a good teacher, man. You, you taught you taught me how to play well. How's that feel, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, we have uh, yeah. couldn't, turns. Couldn't establish my kill chain. I also didn't defend. I was just trying to establish my kill chain. It so if I get it like a 17 or higher at this point, I'd win, right? Uh, an 18 or higher. Okay. Gotcha. And 10. Nothing. So nothing. Uh, it, it still is nothing. So I'm going to use Cyber Deception again to take out your internal password spray. Okay. I rolled an 11, so it did. I took out ah. your internal password spray. All right. And that was the end of my turn. So I defended, so I can't do anything else. Your turn. Um, Let's go with... Not cred stuffing. Sorry, I'm gonna make a mess again. Um, let's just go with local priv esque on this one. Okay. Gonna escalate some privs and fail. Okay. All right. And your turn. I'm gonna go back to establish my kill chain, and I can't. So that's. All right. Wonderful. I'm gonna try the same thing again. Local priv esque. And that was successful. And 13. All right, so I'm down to five. Hmm. Uh, what are we keeping track of turns? Just thought I'd throw I, that I'm out. Not bad about it. I don't know. It's probably. Uh, yeah, we're, we're at 18. <laughs> I was keeping track. So I'm going to do cyber deception again because if I fail, I still succeed. But if I succeed, I still succeed. So I took <laughs> out your, uh, your pivot and escalation card. All right. So that was the end of my turn. So let's curb a roast. Look for some creds and successful. All right, let's go. All right, Nothing. fail. Ooh, so, as the end of your turn, I, I mean, I have to establish my kill chain and take 20 of your points. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> he can roll a one. Mm, no. Nope. This is my last turn. I'm going to establish my kill chain. There we go, there's one. That looks There's like a two. win. Oh, oh. That's one. <laughs> is that three ones in one game? Yes. Not your man. That's not how you win. <laughs> All right, your last turn. All right, let's go. Uh, two. And <laughs> congratulations, your thirty, your thirty-three <laughs> points. What were you like, down to five or something <laughs> at the beginning? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Good game, man. Well. Good game, GG. It's a so someone has to lose. It takes a big man to lose three times on stream. So it does. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well done. You practiced so many rounds too. It's like I'm gonna definitely win one and just yeah. got smoked. Well, everybody, thank you so much. It's past the hour. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube or if, you know wherever you watched us, or if you're watching the uh, the recording, thank you so much. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this. We hope you play this. If you want to get the play mats, uh, they're available. Uh, we don't make any money from them. Only Gaming Inc. does because uh, they print them and they ship them. Uh, we just want people to play. Like, really, we just want you to play because we think when in-person conferences start again, we're going to have a hard time people in because <laughs> it's, it's so long of just doing this. And so we have seen this. Uh, we played this at uh, Reno, and it was a way to connect. It was a lot of fun. You have spectators. You have people. And it's a lot of fun. And so hopefully you start playing and you might be able to play here and get used to playing it here in Discord. And when we start doing in-person comms again, you're like, yeah, I want to play. And so hopefully you do that. Ed, thank you so much. Everyone, a huge round of applause to Ed. Ed is the one that has helped us put all this together. Ed, if you don't know, uh, made an illegal version of Backdoors and Breaches a long time ago on Tabletop Simulator. We For tracked him down. Version. Yeah, we, we, we tracked <laughs> him down, and he was like, are you going to sue me? And we said, no, we want to give you a job. And uh, Ed, thank you so much. For joining uh, sometimes team. crime does pay. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a statement endorsed by Black Hills Information Security. <laughs> it's just a 1099. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ralph, Bo, Deb, Ryan, thanks so much for being here today. To everyone that joined us, thank you so much for being here. And hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you start playing inside Discord or you download the playingcards.io version and you play inside your own organization. And with that, we will see you all next time. I'm going to end the webinar. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. See ya. Bye, see ya.